What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be building a clone of Trello, which we've been talking about in previous episodes, where we're going to use Vue.js to build out the drag and drop support for the lists themselves and the cards that are underneath them. And then we're gonna be all syncing this back to the Rails app using Ajax. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode and I hope you enjoy it. So let's dive in and take a look at Trello real quick if you aren't familiar with it. So they have the ability for you to add lists um, where you can add multiple columns in here and you can archive them and so on. But then you can underneath them add cards which you can give titles and then you can drag them around. You can also drag and drop those lists around. And so every time you make one of these changes, it will be persisted server side so that all of your changes are synced um, and saved in the database. So next time you open this up, it will be visible. So we're going to be replicating this where you can add lists and cards underneath these lists and then have the same drag and drop functionality using Vue.js on the front end. So this is one of those things where you were required to use JavaScript for drag and drop. And so it makes sense for us to use something like Vue so that we can have some of that functionality taken care of for us when we're building out all of the JavaScript for the front end. So what we've got right now is just a blank Rails application that has Devise and Bootstrap installed. We're not even really using Devise at all. We don't care about user accounts in this example, but um, we do want Devise to give it some sort of layout and some helper classes in CSS that we can use to make this look a little prettier. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and generate a scaffold for the list model. This is gonna need a name for that title of the list. And then it's also gonna need a position of integer, um, which will denote which column it should be. So it'll start at one, two, three, four. And if you drag and drop, we'll be able to remember the position. So next time you refresh the page, it will be in the same spot. So we're gonna need that. So we're gonna generate that scaffold. And then we're also going to need to generate a scaffold for cards that refer to the list, so uh, list references, and that's going to allow us to point back to the list. Those are gonna have names, they could have descriptions, you know, assigned users, all kinds of other things that you might want to add. We're not gonna worry about any of those, but we're also going to have a position here, so we know if you drag it down in the list, we can save it in that position and keep it in the same correct list as well. So we're going to generate both of those and then we're going to hop uh, into the gem file and add the axe as list gem. So we'll have axe as list uh, and this is going to be the gem that allows us to do that sorting for those positions and all of that fun stuff. Then we're going to Rails DB migrate to run those migrations and our models folder it's going to have a list and we want to make sure that we have the has many cards association in here but we also want to tell it by default we always want you to order these by position ascending and so that's going to make sure that these cards are always in order based upon the acts as list um, position then we're also going to say dependent destroy because if you remove a list we want to also remove those cards and this should be acts as list so that the lists themselves um, are organized appropriately. Then um, let's also add a validation here for name, presence is true. Keep that uh, validation in there just to make sure that our database is set well. We're gonna have acts as list in here as well, but this one's going to have a scope of the list, which we're going to have as a belongs to list here, so the cards belong to a list, and then they use that list as the scope, and then this is going to validate name, uh, <clears throat> presence is true as well, and that's going to make sure that our names on our cards are always um, added as well. Now, before we start hopping in our views, we also want to go to controllers, list controller, and instead of list.all, we want to order by position ascending here, so it also reflects the same ordering that um, our lists are in the database. So, axis list, we want to apply here and use that same sorting 
as well. Um, we could also do sorted as a method here and we could go into list and say, let's add a scope sorted and that would be the same thing. We could do that as well just to give that a better uh, naming scheme so it could be referenced in other places as well. Now, with this said, we can go to our routes file and let's move the cards and list down here to the bottom um, where they should be. And then we have our resources lists that we want to make as our root route. So when you come to the website, uh, let's start up our server, form and start. When you come to the server, uh, you'll be presented with the lists uh, index page. So once that has loaded, we'll be able to create a couple lists here and we'll go and change up that UI so that we have the lists in columns instead of uh, where they will be in a table right now. So right now we have name, we'll have our backlog, we'll have a new list for in progress, we'll have a new list for uh, completed, and we can go to that form if we wanted and say, well, our list form shouldn't actually have the position in there because that is automatically handled by um, the database access list uh, plugin. So that's going to take care of those in order. But what we should do is in our index, we should maybe get rid of this table and handle this some other way. And so what we might do is we might say, well, let's give it a class of row and this is just bootstrap uh, stuff for us. But we might say that all of these columns are, are divs class column of three wide, for example. And we might give this an H5 or something like that. Um, and just make it so that these would show up in columns across the page. Now this isn't gonna be exactly the same as Trello, where you would actually want a div that overflows and scrolls left and right, as opposed to this where it will actually wrap. So we'll have to come back and change up some of the CSS uh, later on in order to make these the proper widths and so on. But for now, we can prototype this out with Bootstrap pretty easily and get all well on our way. And then we can go back and change the CSS up to make it actually scrollable if we have multiple columns um, like we do in Trello. But really, we still have Rails controlling our UI here, and it'd be nice if we actually had this automatically handled for us by Vue.js. And so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna create a div tag with the ID of boards, and then we're going to pass a data attribute into it called lists, and this is going to be our at list variable, so those lists will be in order in the JSON that we put out here. We'll convert that to JSON and we're going to include the cards with them. So what this is going to do is take our database list and cards, convert them to JSON with the nested structure and everything, and then we're gonna give that as preview data for uh, Vue.js to load up. So when the page loads, it knows all of the lists and cards that are available, and then we can go render those out using Vue.js instead of using Rails. So what this will look like now is nothing, but we will be able to then use Webpacker to set that up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to our console. We're gonna run Rails Webpacker install view. This is going to give us all the defaults for Vue. Um, that will go ahead and give us the configurations, to compile stuff, and a really simple example. But we're going to make some modifications to this, and we're also going to yarn add Vue Draggable, which we'll use as the library to make drag and drop and sorting of our lists. So we'll add that requirement right now, and then we'll also go up to our application um, or our head tag, and then style sheet link tags and JavaScript include tags. We want to change to JavaScript pack tag and style sheet pack tag for application on both of those. That's going to set it up so that um, it will use and include the style sheets and JavaScript for our Webpacker application. 
JS file. And so here we'll go to PAX application JS and we're gonna define our application, our Vue.js application in here. Now we're gonna use Vue import from Vue dist Vue.esm. Now this is the way that you can use it to include the compiler for the templates and that way you don't have to do the weird mounting example that normally comes with um, Hello Vue.js. I don't recommend using what they actually include as a default. Um, and then we'll import our app from the app.view file. So the single file compo component app.view is where we will include our app. And then we can have our standard document add event listener, turbolinks load function. And we can go later on add that turbolinks view adapter that we've created um, to make this re-render every page and clear itself out of the cache. Uh, appropriately. So then we can grab the elements on our page that we're looking for to replace, which is that query selector for the ID of boards, because that's what we want to mount this view application to. And then we say if element is not undefined, then we can go ahead and create our view app, which will say const app equals view, new view, and we'll give it our element of element. Our data for this will be uh, the lists that we give it, or json.parse. We're going to have the element.dataset.lists. These are those ones that we converted to JSON as the data attribute. So if we go to that list index, this is referencing this uh, JSON that we created right here. So it's parsing that JSON out, it's retrieving it, parsing it, giving it to our view app and saying, here's your default data that you wanna use and we'll use that inside of our component. And for now, we're gonna just say template app, which references this app we imported for that single file component. We're gonna have original lists equals lists. Let's do that single quotes. And that will be our template for our application, which we'll run inline. Um, and then our components here, we're gonna say uh, we have app. So this is basically saying, well, any app tag that you see in the template is going to reference the app variable, which is our app.view file. And so that's going to get everything loaded up in our app.view file. So, from here, we can just try this out and you should see we get hello view and everything is loaded correctly. But we can actually go and say, well, we received some props called original lists. And when we do that, that says that if we go back to application.js, so if we go to that in our PAX file, we are passing in original lists and that equals the data.lists. Um, this is actually giving the original list in as a prop. And so we have the original list, here's a prop, which we can accept. And then we can say div v4 list in original lists. Close that div and we can have um, list.name. And we can print all of those list names out and here you will see backlog in progress and completed. So then if we wanted to make those columns once again, we could have our classes row at the top. And for each one of those lists, we could have class equals column three. And we can go back and we'll see now we have three columns. If we want to give those H6 headers, we could do that. And then we could go and give them, say, a little a breaker there and we could have a list v4 card and the index in list.cards and this would be our cards and so we'll create this with card card body and in here we'll have card dot name 
uh, which will be our card name. And so because we haven't created any cards yet, we can go create one in the database. And if we run Rails console here, we can have list.first.cards.create name equals test. That will create a card in our database and we can now see that we have a card here. And if we did that, the same thing with the last list, we could put one over at the uh, end as well. And so what we want to be able to do is have these as drag and droppable, but we also want to be able to create new cards in the UI as well as drag and drop them and the columns themselves. So there's quite a lot that we want to do here, but for now we have the visual UI laid out really easily. So I'm gonna cut this off here and we're gonna come back next episode and start working on the drag and drop functionality as well as creating new cards using Ajax and view draggable to do all of that dragging stuff.